Hi everybody, so we're going to talk about the law of sines. Um, you can see this setup is any type of triangle. It doesn't have to be a special type. It doesn't have to be a right triangle. Um, and the angles are labeled with lowercase letters and the sides that are across from that are labeled with the corresponding uppercase letters. Okay, so if you have a triangle that's um, labeled that way, then the law of sines says that the ratio between the side length and the sine of the corresponding angle is equal for each of these. Okay. All right, so let's see how we would use this. Okay. Okay. So this is supposed to be capital C. There's really no way to denote that, but there you go. Okay. Now, this is a particular case. This is some, what's called like the normal case. Okay. And that's because we have two angles and a side. Okay. We'll talk about what it means to have a different kind of case later on, but this is the normal case where you have two angles and a side. Okay, so in this case, it's really easy to find the third angle because you know that the three angles have to add up to 180, right? And you have the values of A and B. Okay, and that lets you find C right away. All right, so now what's important is that you have an angle and a corresponding side, right? So you have the angle C and the corresponding side C, okay? Now we're gonna use that and the law of sines to find the other two corresponding sides, okay? So we'll just start with A, okay? So we're gonna make a proportion of the side A that we're interested in, okay? And then we know the angle A, okay? And then we know the side C, okay? And we know the angle C, okay? So it's important to make the proportion where one side is all numerical values that you know, and the other side includes a value that you're interested in. Like in this example, we have side length A. Okay, so to solve proportions, you know that you can cross multiply. Okay. And then you can finish, oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. Okay, so we cross multiplied and then you can finish by dividing by sine of 80 degrees, okay, to get the value for A. So this is our exact value, okay, and then we would plug this into our calculator to get um, a value for A. Okay, so we would get approximately 9.3. Okay, now we do still need to find the side length B. Okay, so when we're setting up to find that side length, okay, we're going to use side length B, right, because that's what we're interested in, and the corresponding angle B, which if you remember was 65 degrees. Okay, and then 
Now, here's the thing that confuses people sometimes. Do you want to use, do you want to compare it to A or to C? Okay, now we want to compare it to C. Okay, I guess I should label this as B if I'm doing it this way. Okay, and the reason for that is because we know the exact value of C. We don't know the exact value of A, we're estimating it as 9.3. Okay, so to avoid getting a rounding error, we're gonna use side C again where we have the exact values. Okay, so I'm gonna fill in my values for C, which is 16, and then angle C, which was 80. Okay. And then I'm going to solve for B. Okay. All right. So here's my exact answer. Okay. And then my approximate answer when I plug this into my calculator is 14.7. Okay, all right, so now we know all the angles, all the sides, and remember that's what it means by solve the triangle. Okay, all right, now let's talk about what is not the normal case. Okay, so this is called the ambiguous case. And you get the ambiguous case when you know two side lengths and only one angle. Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, so you can see this is what we described. You have one angle and then two side lengths. Okay, so you can't use the Pythagorean theorem because this is potentially not a right triangle. Okay, so that's the reason you can't use the Pythagorean theorem. You have to use the law of sines. Okay, and we want to compare something that we don't know, right? Which in this case, we want to do B first because we only want one variable. Okay, so we are going to compare A, which we know both the angle and the side length, to B, where we only know the side length. Okay, all right, so I'm going to fill in the values that I know. B is 5. The angle B is what we're looking for. A is 6 and the angle A is 15 degrees. Okay, so we're gonna solve for sine B. Okay, so we would divide both sides by six. All right. Okay, and remember, you can use this on your calculator, okay, to find the angle that's associated with this expression, okay? So this would give us B is approximately, let me look at my answer here, 12.5 degrees, okay? All right, now because we already have two angles now, we can find our third angle, okay, by remembering that they add up to 180 degrees. Okay, and then the last thing that we need to do is find the side length C, okay? So we're gonna compare the side that we know everything about, which is A, Okay, 
to the side that we're interested in, which is C. Okay, and then we're going to fill in the information that we have. So A was 6, the angle A is 15 degrees. C is what we're looking for, and then the angle C is 152.5. Okay, you can multiply both sides by sine of 152.5. And this gives us our exact value for C. Okay, and then we can use our calculator to get our approximate value for C, which is 10.7. Okay, so this is not too different from um, the normal case, right? It's just that you have to start out using the law of sines to get a second angle before you can use the fact that they add up to 180 to get the third angle. Okay, let's look at another example of that that turns out slightly differently. Okay, so we're going to start the same by comparing the one that we know everything about, the side A, okay, with the side that we're interested in, which is B. Okay, so now I'm going to fill in all the values that I know. Okay, and now I'm going to solve for sine B. All right, now before I use the sign negative one button, I am going to just figure out what this is using my calculator real quick. Okay, and I want you to think about this value. Okay, remember the graph of sine, okay. Well, can sine be 1.07? Think about the graph of sine. Everything, all the y values for sine are between negative 1 and positive 1. The value for sine can't be greater than negative, greater than positive 1 or less than negative 1. Okay? This is impossible. So what that means for us is that we have no solution. Okay? So again, this is because sign is never greater than 1, okay? So because this sign would have to be greater than 1, 1 1.07, there's no solution, there's no triangle where this is the case, okay? Now, if you just plugged this into your calculator, it would definitely give you an error, and that's another reason that you would be able to tell while solving this problem that there's no solution. Okay, let's look at third example of the ambiguous case. Okay, so again, we're going to start the same way. We're going to compare A with uh, the side that we only have one piece of information about. Okay, so let me fill in my information. Okay, looks good so far, so I'm going to solve for sine B.
Okay. So if you check this to see if this is greater than one, it isn't. So I'm gonna use this value on my calculator to help me get the value of B. And I can see that B is approximately 72.2 degrees. Okay, and that allows me to find my angle C, 49.8. Okay, and now I'm gonna use that information to find my side C. So I'm going to fill in the stuff from A. Okay. And then I'm going to multiply both sides by sine of 49.8. When I plug this into my calculator, I get that C is approximately 10.3. Okay. Now, this seems like the very first problem that we did, right? It's really similar. We found the, one, the second angle value that allowed us to get the third angle value, and then we used that to get the third side. Okay. Now, what if this isn't really the value of B? Okay, well, why might you wonder about that? Okay, we'll talk about that in a second. Okay, but there's two angles that have the same sign. Okay, you guys actually know that. So if you look at the angle that we had, which was 72.2, so let's imagine what that looks like. Okay. Well, what angle is gonna have the same sign as that? Well, it's the angle that has the same reference angle, but it's in a different quadrant. Okay, how do I know it's in the second quadrant? Well, because if sine is positive, it has to either be in the first quadrant or the second quadrant, okay? So we would look for this angle, okay? which turns out to be 107.8 degrees, okay? So what if B instead was 107.8 degrees? Well, then the angle C, right, would be 14.2, Okay, and that's because we know that A, B, and C add up to 180, and our A value was 58 degrees. Okay, then just like we did before, we can use this to find the value of the side length C. Okay, so A is given in the problem was still 11.4. The angle A, which is given in the problem, is 58 degrees. Okay, and remember now we're using 14.2 for the angle C. Oops. Okay, we can solve for C. Okay, and when you plug this into your calculator, you get that C is 3.3, approximately. Okay, now the deal here is that you have these two different triangles. One is an acute triangle where all of the angles are less than 90 degrees, and one is an obtuse triangle because you have this big angle where one is larger, okay? So the first one is gonna be something that looks like this, where all the angles are pretty similar, 
right? So this is the first triangle that we found, right? With the angles being the given 58 and then 72 and then 49, okay? But the other one is gonna look more like this where you have the one big angle, okay? One kind of medium size one, the one that's 58 and then one that's really small. Okay, so you have this bigger angle. Now, this is a reason that it's called the ambiguous case. Okay, you can't tell which of these two triangles you're talking about by looking at the information that's given. Okay, both of the triangles will have an angle that's the given 58 degrees, and both of them will have the side lengths 11.4 and 12.8. Okay. Now, why didn't we have this problem in the very first example we did of the ambiguous case? So let's look at that. Okay, so this is the first example that we did. Okay. Of the ambiguous case. Okay, so we got that B was 12.5 and then that would make C 152.7. Now, what would the other triangle look like? Okay. Well, it would be the one whose angle is in the second quadrant with the same reference angle, 12.5. Okay, and then this much larger angle, right, would be 180 minus 12.5, right, which would be 167.5 degrees. Okay, but remember what the original angle was. A, right, this would be B, but the A value was 15 degrees. Now, can these two angles be in the same triangle, 167.5 and 15? They can't. Okay, and this is because A plus B plus C has to be 180 degrees. Okay, so this is why we didn't get two triangles in the first example is because the one that you would get, the angle is so large that it can't coexist with the given angle, okay? And this is really the only way to tell if there's a second triangle, okay? You find the first triangle, solve it all normally, okay? And then when you go to check for the second one, you find out what B would be, Okay, the angle in the second quadrant that has the same reference angle. And if that can coexist with the original angle, then there is a second triangle, okay, like this, right? You get 107, that's fine with the original angle, which was 58, okay? These can fit into the same triangle with an angle C of 14.2, or you get this situation where they can't coexist and then there's only a single triangle. Okay, all right, so let's look at an applied example. Okay, so 
if I was you right now, I would pause the video and try to try to draw a diagram of this yourself. Okay, so go ahead and do that. But I'm going to move on and draw the diagram for you. Okay, so once you've read this, you've understood what it says, then you can draw a diagram. Okay, so here's my leaning tower. It's probably a lot more than a four degree angle. Okay, and then there's the ground. And here's the spot that's 100 feet away. Okay, so the hot spot that's 100 feet from the tower. Okay, and then I know that this angle here is four degrees. Okay, now the angle of elevation from the ground up to the top of the tower, that's going to be here. Okay, and I know that this is 61.7 degrees. Okay, now because this angle is four degrees, this whole angle here is going to be 94 degrees. Okay. All right. So I have 94 degrees, 61.7 degrees, and I am looking for this height here. Okay. All right. I mean, this height. That's not the height of the tower. There we go. All right. If it was this straight one, then we could just use a uh, right triangle trigonometry. Okay. So we're looking for this side length here. Okay, that's the height of the tower. Okay, and so I want to use the law of sines. Okay, but the only side I know is this one. So I really need to know the angle that's across from the known side. Okay, so I'm going to do that by remembering that all the angles add up to 180 degrees. And that would give me this angle that I labeled as C as 24.3 degrees. Okay, and now I can use the law of sines. So remember you're comparing the sign, the side that you know everything about, okay, to the side that you are interested in. So this is the side we're interested in. So we have H over the opposite side, 61.7. Okay, and I'm just going to fill in those sides C and then the angle C. Okay, all right. Now I'm going to solve for H. All right, and then plug it into my calculator to get an approximate value, which is about 214 feet. Okay, so I just wanted to point out that we don't have to worry about the ambiguous case because this is the normal case where you have two angles and one side length. So there's no chance that we're talking about a different type of triangle because we have two angles and one side. Okay. Okay, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys soon.